welcome to Watch Symposium. I'm Austin. eBay or Flea Bay, rightly called Flea Bay. And buying a pre owned Rolex is dangerous. Buying a pre owned Rolex on eBay, doubly dangerous. We're going to take a look at a couple of very sketchy Rolex watches at the end of the video, but I got scammed. I got scammed. Look, I love to hit eBay and check out Rolex swag. You guys know I love my hats. I've got five or six Rolex hats. I've got six Rolex wallets, some of which you haven't even seen. Uh, this is the one I carry. And um, passport wallets. I love that kind of stuff. And up until recently, I've had really good luck with not getting a fake, but I got a fake. In fact, I made a video unboxing it, and let's look into that. And uh, as you can see, a uh, passport holder, Rolex passport holder, and this has 10 slots, and I've got a few with three slots, but I think there are 10 slots total. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, they they always have the three slots over here and the one slot here, but uh, usually only three places for cards. And uh, let's take a look at it. Yeah, okay, good. It's always good to see. No decimal points in the product number. Big red flag there. Uh, yeah, it looks... Uh, brand new got the coronet right there and uh pretty perfect condition all right it's about this point in the video that my gut starts to sink and i think something's wrong i bravely carry on as if nothing is but secretly i can't wait to end the video and take a closer look and what are the telltale signs well first of all fake leather if it's perfect totally uniform that's a good indication that it's fake also if you look closely here you can see where it's stitched the plastic is starting to flake off also it's glued and you could probably rip it it's just clearly just this thin poorly executed plastic all right so got my money back just today and look this seller just maintained to the bloody end that it was a genuine wallet and every correspondence back and forth she would say genuine wallet i'm gonna put that genuine wallet back up i'm gonna sell that genuine wallet all day long and uh look it's not a genuine wallet. She wanted me to go to Rolex to have it confirmed, like Rolex, like an AD would. And uh, even if they would, they couldn't because it was a fake plastic leather wallet, uh, probably made for two bucks. And um, I think what she wanted to do is show such conviction that it was authentic that I would say, hey, maybe I do have the real thing. She's real keen to get it back and sell it. So hey, maybe I just had to hold on to it. I might've come out on top of this one. Well, not the case. She said that she had gotten it when quote, her man had a Rolex sent to him by Rolex and it was included with that purchase of a Rolex. Well, Rolex doesn't do that. Rolex doesn't send watches and uh, the watch he was sent, well, honey, you might want to look into that too because it might be fake as well. The genuine Rolex wallet, the genuine Rolex wallet. She was really trying to drive that home that it was basically, I think, trying to convince herself. You know, if I don't admit it, then I can put it back up on eBay. And she's going to, somebody's going to buy it and somebody's going to get screwed. They probably won't know it. And if she can work her magic and convince that sucker that they've got a real leather Rolex passport wallet, then, uh, well, bad for them, I guess, good for her. Now, she didn't refund my shipping, and look, she has been selling, I guess, for a while, 900 plus, nearly a 1,000 
uh, favorable reviews, not a single negative one. But she was such a twat about it and nickeled and dimed me on the shipping, which I later made a claim and got back that I had to call her out. I said, sold me a fake wallet and gypped me on shipping. And I gave her her first minus. And so she's gone from 100% to 99.8. Was it worth eight pounds, eight and a half pounds? I didn't want to do it, but you get caddy with me and you mess with the bull, you get the horns, all right? All right, so as promised, some Rolex watches that are a bit sketchy. Now, the caveat that these two watches have is that the dials are custom dials. They're aftermarket dials. And the reason why people probably from the Rolex forum have, haven't jumped on these listings and had them taken down is because they admit it, all right? And now that's a, a kind of another thing. It's, it's an aftermarket dial, it's a fake dial, it's counterfeit, but because they admit it, it's okay. Uh, that doesn't seem right to me, but uh, at least in the fine print, they appear not to be trying to screw people. But, uh, you know, if, if you don't do your homework and you don't read the fine print, you could be taken in by one of these watches. Now, I was looking at bluesies, Rolex bluesies. Now, would I actually ever buy a Rolex bluesie from eBay? Hell no, but it's always nice just to check out what's out there. Well, our first uh, watch we're looking at is this Rolex Submariner 16613 Champagne 30 dial for the bargain price. And this is pretty cheap of $8,295, all right? And that's about 900,000 yen. And this is an X serial and X serials come from 91 and again, it's got a custom dial, AKA more accurately called fake, all right? And let's look at it. First of all, what are some things that just jump out? Well, look at the word Submariner, look at the S. It's shorter than the U. That's a, a little stunted, you know, little sketchy S there. Okay, that's strange. And where it says a thousand, the thousand, the text looks a little off to me there. But that, that odd S is just screams fake. And then you look down where it says uh, the, the tritium statement under the six indices. And that's, it's too big. The font looks a little off. They did, you know, credit to them, try to give it serifs, which it should have. Um, and when you're looking at the indices the uh, 12 and the 6 and the 9 the way that that triangular precious stone is set there's way too much frame there's way too much frame and then at the at the 6 indices it's it's crooked and the diamonds you know are are not really uh, uniform there's a the surrounds are a little bigger in some places smaller in others that's nothing we'll we'll see one that really uh, uh, is bad in that regard. Notice they never say it's a diamond dial. Good for them, all right. So uh, they haven't misled anybody there because I'd be willing to bet that the, those aren't real diamonds. But uh, there you go. So how much of this is fake? We don't know, but the dial definitely is. And look, is it a deal? This is, you know, no box, no papers. If it does have a box, it's one of these aftermarket, like, you know, worth a dollar boxes probably from China. But you know, and we're gonna talk uh, Japanese yen here because we're gonna look at Japanese prices, 900,000 yen. So that's what you'd be paying for this. And look at some of these prices for real bluesies. Now granted, they aren't diamond dial bluesies, but they're, they're real box and papers pieces from Japan. And the prices are pretty much around the same. So why would anybody go this route? Let's look at watch number two. This one says Rolex Submariner 16613 Diamond Sapphire. Oh, that's the precious stone, Sapphire, sturdy dial. Now, I would be willing to bet that these aren't sapphires, these aren't diamonds. You'd have to prove it, that would be tough, but on that alone, I think that this listing probably warrants being taken down because uh, the description is off. Now this is, uh, 
an S serial. S serials came out in 93, 94. And let's take a look at it. Now, look at the indice at the two. Look at how much gold is in the surround. Look how small the diamond is. And then, and then look at, in comparison, the indice at the number seven, the seven indice. And look, that actually looks halfway decent. So very, very poor custom dial and really thick Submariner. It should have serifs, it doesn't. Uh, the tritium statement below the six, again, it's too big. And look at that uh, less than mark. It's weird, it's, it's lowered, it's kind of tilted. So again, they, they're honest about it being a custom dial, but if you're not reading the fine print, you might look at that price and it's priced the same as the other one and think, hey, you know, this is a, a good deal. And, and look, to call it a custom dial for a lot of people not in the know makes it actually, you know, sound like it might be a favorable thing. Uh, you know, so it's, it's uh, to some ears, custom dial might sound like a plus, like a bonus. But to most of us, we know that that just translates as aftermarket, which translates to fake. And if you look at the crown, the crown is very sketchy here. Now, this could just be wear on the crown, but a lot of uh, fake watches, and I'm not calling this a fake watch. I think it's clear that the dial is, but a lot of fake watches do have uh, crowns that aren't finished properly. And the bezel, uh, itself. Look at the outer rim of the bezel. Look at how soft it is. Uh, it's either fake or it's been polished to hell. Look at it. I mean, it's those look like waves, uh, how badly polished and how over polished it is. And, and again, it might be real, but it's certainly over polished. And uh, I'm willing to give it the benefit of the doubt because look at the clasp. Look at the clasp. Do you see the Rolex crown there? My gosh, it's like just a shadow of it left. So polished to hell. And we don't know what else is wrong with it. You know, spring bars, end links, a link here and there. We don't know what's going on in the interior of this watch. Oh, I forgot. It looks like it's got maxi hands. Okay, so those aren't real hands. That uh, Those are maxi hands. It shouldn't have a... A set of maxi hands it is just cheap enough to tempt people that just know enough about prices to, to know it's lower than typical bluesy sturdy dial submariners but um, and, and that's what they're trying to do it's it's it they're they're going for either a, a kind of a gullible person or I guess a person who uh, has no standards and and just really doesn't care but uh, my guess is they're banking on somebody who's going to compare the prices, see that this is lower, not notice it's a custom fake dial, or not care. And yeah, it's, it's, it's tough to know what kind of customer they're going for, but uh, what a terrible proposition. And look, you couldn't ever take this to RSC. They wouldn't touch it. They wouldn't touch it. Too many, well, the dial has been replaced, and so they wouldn't have anything to do with it. And so good luck getting the rest of the parts authenticated. You know, you'd have to take it to an independent and he or she would have to, well, they'd first of all, they'd have to know about Rolex watches and they'd have to agree to deal with your garbagey uh, Franken watch. So you'd probably never even know how much of this watch is real. And look at the lugs as well. It looks, I mean, obviously this piece has been polished to hell and back. Uh, but talk about round uh, lugs, wow. Anyway, not worth squat. I wouldn't pay 2,000 bucks for this. So maybe that's the question for you guys. What would you pay for this watch? I mean, we don't know how much of it's real. I feel like parts of it are real. Um, could, what would be the price that would tempt you to say, ah, uh, let's just have fun with it? Anyway, let me know what you think. Be sure to like and subscribe, and uh, be careful on eBay. It's a fun place to trawl around and look at the Rolex swag and the Rolex watches and contemplate picking up that tempting, dirt cheap 6694, but I think you're better off just saving your money, saving up, and just going for good pieces instead of this kind of garbage. But hey, that's eBay for you.
Take care. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.